Hey, good morning. Good morning. Rise and shine, angel baby. What do you want for breakfast? I'm going to have some eggs. Let's share. Let's get this day going. Phantom Family Podcast. Why, hello there. I am Tori Phantom here with my husband, Jimothy. Hey, I am Jimothy in it's the flesh. true. He is Jimothy, and you are listening to the Phantom Family Podcast. Yes, you are. And it might sound a little bit different, but we have got new audio equipment. And this is very exciting for me because Jimothy put me in charge of the buttons. I have buttons, friends. You don't... You don't. Yeah, I know. Very exciting. I have buttons. But what I'm saying... <laughs> Jiminy Christmas. <laughs> is that I do have control of the buttons. And so this episode might be a little full of extra jokes. You know what I mean? I'm just feeling kind of special. This is already going off the rails. <laughs> I hit the button twice. You double tapped it. I double tapped the button. You do- don't. We don't need to do that, though. I think we might need to do that. I'm I'm really enjoying the buttons. You're just going to try and test out all the buttons on the show, right? And I live. am. Yeah. That's what's Go gonna... for it. Do the blue one. <laughs> okay. Oh, I did two at once. <laughs> Look at that. I uh, can't. Right. This is this is beautiful <laughs> audio, everyone. This is what we spent the money on was for you to just to make listen to me enjoy the buttons. Comedy sounds. They're colored. They're they're very brightly colored buttons and you don't even have to push them. You just like they're just touch sensitive and it's it's very exciting for me. They're they're like the rubber pads. If anybody's used a MIDI controller where there's always like the touchpad thing on it, that's just what it I is. I don't think most people have used a MIDI. A lot of people have used stuff but like this. We these. do. We even have <laughs> custom buttons such as this one. Yes. So this this one time when I was nine years old, my mom threw a table at me, and that was kind of scary. All right, I'm done. I mean, that was the proper usage of those <laughs> buttons altogether. And it's nice now that we can have the live trauma dump in there. So instead of me putting it in in post-production later on, it's it's literally you just I say, you guys, I'm feeling really sad. I think it's just about time for a trauma dump. And then drop some trauma. Dump it right now. I, I, speaking of dumping it, you sent me a picture. <laughs> nope, we're not talking about that picture of the on baby this, show. this morning. Yeah, that yeah, was not, that was there. that was disgusting. That was that gross, was a disgusting and thing I dealt with this morning. I've never been you more also, shocked and proud at the same time. <laughs> Y'all don't need to hear about that. No. So, how has your week been? It's been bad. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> I've been very sick it's this been, week. It's been two weeks. It started about two weeks ago. It's the, the nature of having a, a bigger family is two weeks ago, I, I got really sick and I thought I had appendicitis. I had really bad stomach pain. I ended up in the ER. I did not have appendicitis and I felt better a few days later. But what did you end up having? They had no idea. They yeah. had no idea what was wrong. But American the, medical for uh, you. Yeah. So, a, a couple days later, my five year old comes down with a stomach bug. So, squirrely girl gets sick with a stomach bug and then the next beanie baby gets sick with the stomach bug and we're like oh great here we go and then our kids started back in in person school and then our nine year old on her fourth day of school comes home with a sore throat with a fever she's sick for a few days and then beanie baby and our squirrely girl got it and now of course mom and dad are afflicted. Yeah, I mean, we do a lot of snugging. We we do some snuggles. We do because the babies are sick, so you gotta snuggle them, and of you course. just you just wait for the sneezes on your face. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot, and all the time, <laughs> every time they start digging in their nose, I'm like, you digging for gold? And Beanie Baby is like, I found a booger. I'm like, don't show me. I don't need to I'll know I'll tell you, this. the funniest thing this week, the funniest, most disgusting thing, there's been a lot of disgusting the last week because of sick kids. Yes. But I was live streaming on TikTok, right? So I only had Beanie Baby home. The other two were in school because they were healthy enough to be there. And I am live streaming on TikTok doing my makeup. Beanie Baby is hanging out upstairs with me. And as I'm sitting there doing my thing, she sneezes, right? Gross. So of course yeah. I said Godzilla. As and you do. It's not denominational. Gross. Yeah. And so she's sitting there and I I watched. It was this split second moment where she kind of looks back and forward and she she looks for a tissue. She did not see something immediately to wipe her nose on. So what does she do? She raises her hand to her face and blew her nose directly <laughs> into her hand. I do that when I'm in the shower. And I honestly want to go back and look at my live replay on TikTok. Wait, what? I'm in the shower. I'm clean. St- Stop. It's not scary. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> I, hate, I 
hate snot. I can deal with anything. I can deal with anything that is gross, but snot just does not. I, I, then why uh, do I always have to wipe the butts? But, just because I don't want to. But anyway, you- so <laughs> she she blows her nose directly in her hand, and I am positive that this is on my live stream of the face I must have made in that moment. And it just, I just didn't, I just was frozen for 10 seconds, just staring at her in disbelief. And she's just laughing because she thinks my reaction is hilarious. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> bro, we have options. <laughs> Ugh. And you know who else has options? Who's that, Jim? Anybody who wants to listen to all the books, all the books. on Audible. Audible. You've got plenty of, of options. Books. And you have the option, if you're a new user, to get a free month-long trial at Audible. Just go to www.audibletrial.com slash phantom, and you get a free one-month membership to Audible. And that comes with a credit for a book that you get to keep forever. Forever. Even if you cancel the membership. And I think that's pretty neat. And if you stick with the membership, it's $14.95 a month, and you get another credit for any book in the, the Audible library. You get a credit for that every month. And if you're a Prime member, you get two credits. Two credits for two bucks. But you can start your first month for free. All you got to do is check out our referral link at www.audibletrial.com slash phantom. So we just want to say thank you to all of our monthly supporters over on Anchor. We got a new one. We have a new friend over there, Rachel. Thanks to Elizabeth, Sienna, and Emily as well. Thanks, friends. Yes. You can you can be a supporter of the show on our Anchor website for as little as 99 cents a month. And every time that you support me, it gives me a whole new button to press. Oh, you're so angelic. Isn't it lovely? Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're having fun with that. See, this was a good investment. I am having fun. That wasn't even a joke. I know. That, what, what is? I'm laughing, though. You are laughing, and that is what is good. I'm glad buttons. I removed the laughter button and replaced it with trauma dump instead. Oh, there was one that I was just laugh laughing. Button. There, there are a oh. few that I got rid of. There's laughter. I got no. We still have applause. Who gets it's rid the yellow of laughter. Button. I got rid That's of it because rude. we have these, these were the stock noises in here. Stock noises. Yes, they were stock. Wow. Anyway, anyway, we're thanking our supporters <laughs> Thank you. because because of you guys, we do get to invest in more equipment. And as Tori said, we do get more buttons. I have the buttons right here. I just I got to program them. So maybe we can come up with something. Maybe you can we go should have Instagram. a button contest on my Instagram. We're going to do that. Thing, what, what's a bumper? What's a little trigger? What's a little repeating sound that, that you want to hear? What sound can I use to annoy Jim? Do the thing. That's, that's what we need. It's we can do something It's silly. a sound that I need to be able to use to annoy Jim that isn't just this. I like that sound. It's just you got to use it properly. You won't by the end of this episode. Use it properly. (laughs) But you know what else I like that people can use? I do know what else you like that people can use on Anchor because we you you don't have to monetarily support us. We're just glad you're listening to us, friends. Yes. But the other cool thing, if you head over to our Anchor page, you can actually leave us voice messages, and we love hearing from you. We love hearing the voice messages. And so this week, do you know where our topic comes from? This week, Jimothy, I do know. This week we have a lovely listener who has left us a voice message and we're going to play that right now. Okay, Jim, did you know there are three main things I love about this message from Rachel? What are the three main things you love about this message from Rachel? Well, number one, as an American, I love the accent. I do. Is that Scottish? Am I hearing Scottish? It just says UK where she's from and yeah, I don't want to assume. I, I do believe that's an English accent. English? You're going English? English? I'm going Rachel, English. let us know where you're from. Because I have my friend in England. And and it's yeah. it sounded Scottish to me, but I don't know. No. Maybe I I don't know. <laughs> Not us trying to figure out different accents. Us ignorant uh, Americans. Anyway, <laughs> that's all we are. I ju- I just I love the way you said adult. It ju- it just sounds fancy. I like it. <laughs> uh, secondly, yeah, absolutely, we will adopt you. Uh, anyone listening, if you need new parents, we are now your internet parents, and what? we are proud of you. Oh, I am very proud We're of each so and proud of every all single of you. one of you. Uh, but the other thing I really loved about this was the mention of therapy, because as you know, I love therapy. I'm a big advocate for therapy. And if you start therapy and hate your therapist, it is not you. It is your therapist, and you can totally fire them and find a new one. And not enough people know that. 
That's that's so not true. enough people know that I fired four therapists over the last year and I just found my perfect therapist. So that's just a thing to know that I just want to throw that out there. Like if you start therapy and hate your therapist, it's not a problem with you. It's a problem with your therapist. You guys just don't you just don't jive together. And that's OK. I liked that one therapist you had, the one who ended up leaving the practice. Yeah. I thought that was a great therapist because you were you were making strides. I was doing really good. But this new therapist, I'm making strides again. But anyway, uh, the third thing I love about this message is the idea of self-parenting. Because what's interesting to me is that I had never heard the term reparent or self-parent until I got on TikTok. And through my videos that I make about how I parent... I've heard that term so many times because I hear from folks all the time, like your videos help me reparent myself. And I ended up like doing research onto what that exactly meant. And it turns out it's something I was doing without even realizing, which is the same thing with gentle parenting. Like these are intuitive things to me. Uh, and just because it comes easy to me doesn't mean I'm better at it. It's just like that has been a natural response for me with my trauma. And so the idea of reparenting or self-parenting is essentially giving your adult self what you didn't get from your parents in childhood. And I think that's kind of a beautiful idea because I, I feel like it is really hard to move past childhood trauma and the things you went through as a child. And there's a lot of folks out there who say, like, it's your past. Like, you can't blame your parents forever. Like, get over it. And I firmly believe you don't have to get over it. You, you have to live with it. You have to find a way to live with it. And there's many ways to do that. Again, therapy. Uh, but I, I love this idea of reparenting and self-parenting because I really feel like it takes the power back from your trauma. And it's not a quick fix. It's not an easy fix. But it is a way to kind of take that power back from what was taken from you. And so that's that's kind of where I want to start this. Have you ever heard about reparenting or self-parenting, Timothy? I had never heard of reparenting. Self-parenting, I feel like, is... It's kind of the same thing, just different words. Well, when I when I hear the word self-parenting, I think of like latchkey kids and stuff like that, like where the... The, the kids are parenting themselves okay but so I you, think I think that's a right. completely different concept consider, that's yes. that's just me taking it at face value just the words right you're kind of considering that in the idea of as a child parenting yourself or having to yeah. raise your siblings etc uh, yeah I've never I've never thought of the concept of, of reparenting you know obviously retraining your 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 brain and your thought patterns and processes and and such that yeah yeah that yeah. I'm, I'm aware of. And, and that's the thing I think as well that people don't always recognize. And now that mental health is being talked about more, I think that's kind of coming to light at this point that, sure, we are responsible for the decisions we make, but there is an influence on the decisions we make based on how we were raised. And so while I'm not going to say the bad decision I made last week is my mom's fault. I uh, will. The- I'll blame it because you <laughs> talked to your mom on FaceTime right before you made that decision. You know it was. <laughs> You know it was her fault. But it's it's this idea it's this idea that the way that we were <coughs> raised is essentially kind of molding us to to be the people we are as adults and that's not an idea that's a, that's a truth that's a fact you know we we are our past in a way we we can grow from our past we can change and learn but that foundation of who we are and how we process our feelings and our surroundings and other people is very much rooted in the way that our parents raised us. And so that reparenting to be able to take that self-awareness, reflect on what we don't love about what our parents did and say, well, how can I fix this in myself because my parents didn't meet my needs? Because, you know, the, the thing is with kids, their needs are more than food and shelter and clothing their their needs are so much more wide range that even even the way that we parent in a very self-aware way where we're communicating with our kids to try to have them even tell us maybe there's a need that they have that we're not aware of right yeah and so this idea is that like i know as a fact i try my best as a parent every day And of course, my best looks different every day. Your best looks different every day because uh, we are humans with feelings and we go through things and sometimes our best isn't great. And that's okay because we're people and we need to be gentle with ourselves. And I had to reparent myself to get to that point. But I know someday my kids are going to tell me like, mom, I really hated it when you did this. Like, you know, I'm not perfect. There's going to there's things I'm messing up and that I'm not even aware that I'm messing up. And I have to be patient with myself on that matter because 
I, we can only do our best and, and hope that our best is truly enough. And, you know, yeah, I'm rambling at this point. So it's your turn to say something. I'm going to start talking in circles. That's typically what a, a the Tory Phantom move is. Yeah. I don't know that I. I, I don't I don't know. See, I've never taken the time to self reflect and think like, what do I give myself now that I didn't get that I needed as a child? And honestly, what I I feel like I want more of now is just more of what I had as a child, which is free time to myself to play video <laughs> games and play guitar and go shoot BB guns and play in the woods. Can I go play in the woods this weekend? Um, yes, but please bring your phone because I don't trust your knees. Okay. Um. Well. My... Just be home before this the street lights come on, buddy. Do we even have street lights here? Uh, yes, we live in the middle of town. That's true. <laughs> we don't have woods here in the middle of town. No, we don't. So it means I've got to travel to somewhere. Yes, that and then are you woods. also still have to be home before the street lights are on. So you can figure that out. Well, then that means I, I, if I have to travel three hours to woods, that means I have to travel three hours <laughs> back. That means I get a whole forty-five minutes of wood time. Do you need more? I need more. I do need more. Because when I was a child, I spent all day in the woods. Me too, honestly. But okay, so I guess I have some questions for you, Jimothy, because I'm a very self-reflective person, and this is a very easy thing for me to talk about. But we're going to put you on the spot here. All right, let's give it at it. So what would you say, when it comes to emotional needs, that you think your guardian did best for you? Like, do you feel like your emotional needs were met growing up? If you were upset, were they there for you? If you were trauma dump. <laughs> oh, he came over and hit the All button right. himself. Let's go. <laughs> I uh no. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't know that I needed any. Up to and including this point in my life right now, I don't know that I've ever needed any emotional I don't know what emotional needs I would even need. As I am not spouse. that self aware. <laughs> As your spouse. Tell me what tell me what emotional <laughs> needs I need. As your spouse, I think you needed someone to ask you what you were feeling and have you talk about it. I never talked about I don't even talk about how I'm feeling now because I don't feel any if you ask me how I'm feeling, I don't know. And that's a problem. That wasn't a joke. <laughs> that's not the right use of that. Go ahead go ahead and here, listen. You know what? You want to be my free therapist? Well, you're cheap and you're easy. Isn't that what your TikTok said? Something like that? I did not say easy. Hit the yellow button. Oh. (laughs) I couldn't reach it, so I just had to tell you. that's fine. That's a little awkward. Hit the purple. (laughs) Oh, wait. That's not purple. purple. Purple's the color of your hair this moment. Today. That's why I said this moment. Anyway, it could change after we anyway, get done recording. But honestly, do you? Okay, so we're just gonna unpack some some relationship stuff live on the podcast. I hope you enjoy. Would I won't. you agree? <laughs> would you agree? <laughs> no. Or would you not agree? Honestly, let me open ended question this so I'm not leading. Let's it. ask the question. When I come to you and very specifically communicate what my feelings are. Does that stress you out? Very much. Do you think that might have something to do with the fact that feelings weren't talked about at all when you were growing up? I don't know. Because had you had experience (laughs) with communicating feelings growing up, then the idea of talking about feelings probably wouldn't stress you out now. This is new to you. And we've been together for seven years, but you are... How old are you? 36? 36? Doesn't matter. Irrelevant to the conversation. He's old. Anyway, but 30 years of your life, you went without ever having to talk about your feelings. That's not accurate. I've been in relationships before you, and I was the same way. Exactly. In those relationships. Exactly. Exactly. You've (laughs) never talked about feelings. And so now Yeah, but the other people have constantly talked about their feelings, and I didn't like them either. (laughs) Did you say you don't like me? The feelings, not the not the right, them. But... I know you're a they them. I meant you know what I meant. <laughs> Jeez Louise, rimshot. This is getting confusing. I'm so sorry. 
<laughs> anyway. Anyway. So so tell me. So I should have been talking about my feelings this whole time. You should have been. That is so important because it's like an emotionally stunted thing. Okay, this but isn't here's a critique of you because like obviously we both have our own issues when it comes to feelings. You don't have enough. I have too many. I'm. Go- that's what I'm about to say. Is yeah. and, and I don't mean this to be negative to you or insensitive to you, but I don't care about anyone else's feelings. And I don't mean that negatively. I mean that as in like. I I I'm, I guess it is negative, although I don't want to seem selfish, but I am kind of selfish. I only really kind of care about my needs and like the kids. Yeah. And and to a lesser extent yours, but I <sighs> <laughs> That's crickets. Yeah, I know. There's, there's literally a label right there. <laughs> you, you should, that would have been scary time. Oh, you're right. But no, sorry, I I I don't I don't have Here's the thing. All right, let me, I'm 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 gonna stutter my way through this. All here. right, I'm listening. I don't feel like there's anything anybody could give me that is going to make me feel any certain way. Nobody is there to help me. I have to give myself what I need. So for me, I'm self reliant, and I and so when I look at other people, I'm thinking like, there's literally nothing that I can do to fix you. So why am I gonna sit here and tell you this thing? Why am I gonna do this to this to this person and that? So. Mm-hmm. Wait, I have a revelation for you. That's a harp. Yep. That's the sign of a revelation here. Okay. Uh, Do you know why you are self-reliant and deal with your own feelings and that the idea that other people need support for their feelings is foreign to you? Toxic masculinity? Yes. I don't feel that way, honestly. I don't feel that way because I'm a man. Honestly, you are not. (laughs) Like, when it comes to toxic masculinity, that is not a thing you have. But what you do have is you were raised... To have to be self-sufficient. That is how you were for your entire life. That is how you still are. And so, of course, the idea of discussing your feelings and caring about other people's feelings feels so foreign to you. Because that's how you were raised. You're literally proving the point. I self-parented that whole time. Badly, but... (laughs) (laughs) Come on. You used it right. You used it right. I'll give you that one. But... Regardless, let me use more vocal fillers to make you mad. Um, um but um, how- so, however, however uh, but, so like, um, uh, just get up and start walking in circles and let the cord <laughs> tangle you up, like uh, pumpkin pie. The the point is that it is very much wrapped up in how we were raised. So you are very much numb to feeling because no one cared how you felt growing up, and Which no means one, I didn't either, and no one told you how they were feeling growing up. So you were very much. There was no regard to feeling or emotional literacy in your childhood. That was how you were raised. That's half of your life. Can I say, though, I didn't really feel all that negative stuff. I wasn't some like little emo kid or anything. Like, right. I didn't have and those feelings. Fine. And I think that's why it worked for you, because you are a pretty well-regulated person. Yeah. Like, However, I, d- I didn't have these things to work I through. I will say, in our relationship, you have had a couple panic attacks, and- you can't argue that when I recognize that's what's happening and I come and comfort you that it doesn't fix it, but it, it feels nice to have someone there for you. No, it makes me I it makes me feel like I'm a burden to someone to have to do something and I don't want to feel that way. I would rather suffer in silence and have no one no one know because I don't want to bother people with my do with you know myself. What, that stems from? what? Childhood because no one cared about your feelings. But I care about your feelings. I don't even care Welcome about my own feelings. Welcome to the Phantom Family podcast where we are just unpacking our relationship, apparently. But either way, <laughs> like that's, I feel like that is like a really interesting narrative when we, when we discuss our, childhood, our childhoods versus where we are now. Your family, I've met them. They don't care about feelings at all. And it's not that, I mean, some of them just some of them don't do. care, but some of them, it's just, it's not a thought for them. You know, like they just don't think about it. And where as I grew up where nobody cared about my feelings, but what did I have to do? I had to be hyper aware of my mom's feelings. Okay. Because if I wasn't aware and very in tune to exactly what she was feeling, that could mean big trouble for me. Does your mom listen to this show? Hope not. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, honestly, that that was the thing where I had to be so aware, like, to the sound of, like, the way she would open the door when she got home because it would tell me what mood she was in. And depending on her mood m- would determine how the rest of my day would go, would determine if I was going to be hurt or not. Whether and- it's a Bones Day or a Broken Bones Day. 
Yeah. Yeah. But rim shot. Yeah. It's a good one. It's a good one. But <laughs> I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna sit so, on that side next week. I am so sorry, friends, for this. No, you're not. They're my buttons. I like them. <laughs> uh, but honestly, for only ninety nine cents a month, you can support Tori with a buttons habit. <laughs> That just brings me joy. Anyway, yeah, no, I think that that is a thing. When we consider our childhoods, you grew up with this way (coughs) of having no space for feelings and very much having to just take care of yourself, where I grew up in a way where I had to take care of my mom's feelings and very much be responsible for her emotions, where at the same time suppressing mine because I wasn't allowed space for feelings. And what is it that you know about me, Jim? You have a lot of feelings. But what is it that you know about me with my feelings and my friends? I am here to fix everyone. Yes, you're a helper. I am a helper. I am here. Anytime anyone needs me for anything, it does not matter what time of day. I am here for you. I love you. Uh, but I don't take care of myself very often because of my childhood. Yep. And so that's where the reparenting comes in. 20 minutes into this, um, we're going to talk about things that I've done because I don't think Jim has ever considered it to do it himself at this point. Not yet. I liked the topic, and I, I, you know what? Rachel could have told us, "Hey, could you talk about your serial killing?" I, that was a terrible accent. I, I apologize, that was Irish-ish. Rachel. It was Irish-ish. Yeah. It was Irish-ish. Irish. Um, she, she, they, they. I want to say they. I don't because I don't know. No, no, no he did say she heard. She, she did put say her she heard. Pronouns. It was she heard. So she, um, she, she could have literally said <laughs> to talk about changing a tire, and I would have done it because I am that easily swayed by the accent. Yeah. So I, I, if anything, <laughs> I should probably, I should probably start working on this. Should I work on this now? I am thirty six. Please it's too work late for on me. it. Please go to therapy. <laughs> I don't, I don't have time or a need. No, you do. I'm have doing good. Both. I'm always good with myself until we start talking on here, and then until we start talking about our feelings, and then yeah, you shut down. Yeah, I'm that's great. a reason to go to therapy. I'm great Jim. with feelings until I have to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Okay. Anyway. So here are some things because I had to consider because again I have been reparenting myself without the term for what reparenting is uh, for for a long time now right because I grew up to be a really bad person and I'm not that I am a I am a pretty decent person because I put a lot of work into that. How are you a bad person? Do you mean like bad at? At adulting, bad at personing, I was, or bad person as in like you robbed some banks. Oh, I didn't rob any banks. Like I wasn't a bad person to people. I was just like, I was just so entrenched in self hatred that I was really bad to myself, and I was really bad at functioning. Right. Okay. And so when we're talking about like reparenting, we really have to like look at these ideas of like what our parents didn't do that we needed and that could be something really simple or something really complicated and i i do want to like put a disclaimer that like some people turn into fully functioning normal adults like neuro like just like totally fine and their parents made mistakes because that's the thing i, I want to like put that out there if you're a parent listening to this you don't have to be perfect you are a human and you literally cannot meet every single one of your kids' needs. It is impossible for any one person to meet every single one of another person's needs. Uh, but we can just do our best and meet as many as those needs as necessary. And so kind of like the way that I view parenting is that I want them to have more good than bad looking back at it, right? Because like I mess up sometimes, I lose my temper sometimes, but I know I'm doing generally better more good than bad in their life and I hope that they feel that way too when they grow up you know like and I'm always I'm always willing to accept criticism from our kids yeah but so I would say like one of the things that I had to learn to do in reparenting myself was to stop apologizing for things I'm not sorry for or don't need to be sorry for like eating the last cookie Yes, honestly, very much so. And that's that's the thing I'm still working on. I'm a, I'm a very like I'm sorry person as you know. But I have like gotten to a point where I'm not apologizing as much and I'm encouraging my friends who are my trauma buddies to also like, hey, like you don't have to apologize for that. Like you didn't do anything wrong. You're just existing as a person and that's okay. But it it was things like that. You know, I I remember when my dad got with my stepmom, which of course like it's weird to like because I love her, but it's like she would never parented me. She married my dad after I graduated high school. Like I've never lived with her, but like, you know, for all intents and purposes, stepmom because she's married to my dad. Uh. But I would, like, visit her house, and I would ask her, like, oh, can I have one of these? Can I have a snack? Can I have a piece of this? And she'd be like, why are you, why are you asking 
for that. Like there's there's a whole box of them. Like just grab it and and it's remembering to my childhood where I'm like, oh, I wasn't actually allowed to eat when I was a kid uh, at all. Like <laughs> like I had to have permission and it, it, usually I was turned down for that. And and so it's kind of when those things. I think when you grow up in a traumatic childhood, when you're going through it. Once you're out on your own and you start experiencing people who aren't your toxic family, you start to kind of like it puts it in perspective the amount of ridiculousness that happened in your home. So like for me, that was like, oh, I'm not allowed to eat. And then people are like, no, like you can totally eat. Like, it's fine. Just like if you eat the last one, like, let me know so I can buy more. And it was like, what? Like, I can just do that. Yeah. Like, that's that's OK. But to to stop apologizing for things you weren't sorry for. Right. Because, again, this is one of those things I was saying I would have to navigate my mom's feelings. Right. And so if my mom was in a bad mood, I knew I would be apologizing for existing that day. It It didn't matter. I didn't have that. You didn't have... I didn't have to apologize for things. There were things that I couldn't have, like, you know, my aunt growing up had a lot of Diet Mountain Dew, so I wasn't allowed to drink that or or eat the frozen foods that were made for lunch and all that stuff. But yeah, I did, that was that was really it. I didn't really have the uh, right that. It sounds like you had it pretty bad growing up from listening to this episode alone. It's almost like you haven't been listening to me talk about this kind of stuff for seven years. It's weird. Hi, I am Gerobert. Nice to meet you. Hi, Gerobert. I'm Torothy. We're touching hands we're now. We're touching hands, you can't but you see can't it see it. Because we're not doing video <laughs> podcasts yet. Yet, soon. But either way, so that was just like a big thing for me growing up was that I had to apologize essentially for just existing and taking up space. And so in reparenting myself, it was really learning that it is okay that I take up space. It is okay that I am a person who is here and I'm allowed to be that. And and that was probably one of the biggest hurdles for me to to jump over was the fact that it is okay to take up space. You're allowed, if you're listening to this, I want to remind you, you are allowed to take up space. You're allowed to be here. You don't have to make yourself smaller to make other people more comfortable. It's a big thing to, to realize if you never realized it before. What should I do if I wanted to start doing this? If I wanted to take a step and dip a big toe into this pool of doing this. What What is a step I, I should, could, maybe possibly take? So a step you should take is to honestly just kind of reflect on your childhood and really think about, like, what is something that I wished that I had? And not like a physical thing, not like a tangible the item. The big Ninja Turtle. But oh, I, never mind. Jimothy. But a, a, like, overarching thing where, like, do you wish that you had – that human connection where it was somebody who wanted do you wish your guardians wanted to spend time with you and actually have that connection with you when you were growing up so you weren't just playing alone in the woods all day i wasn't playing alone in the woods i was playing with my neighbors Jim what i wished i had had is what our girls have Every day when That's I a come... great place to start. That is a great place to start as parenting. I'm just going to cut you off real quick so I don't forget it, but it's going to be quick, I promise. But that is a great thing, place to start. If you want to reparent yourself and you are a parent, think about the things you're doing for your kids because you wanted them when you were a kid. And then think about how you can do that thing for yourself. Okay, continue, Jim. What, what I like about what our girls have is the fact that every day I come home from work and Every well, what what happens? I'll let you tell the story. What happens every morning when I leave for work? They all give you hugs and they open the door for you and they wish you well for your day. Mm -hmm. And what happens as soon as I get home? They open the door for you as soon as they see your car in the driveway and they give you hugs and they make you hold them for an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are they are very excited to see me. They're sad to see me leave, but they want to help me in the mornings. Mm -hmm. And then they're very happy to see me come home. Even if I'm home on lunch, yep. it's the exact same they excitement. Daddy. It's like a puppy. Like when you walk out of the house mm -hmm. to get the mail and you come back in and the dog's like, oh, I've never seen you before. I miss you. It's yeah. it's they are they're like my little love puppies. But so, OK, so do you know how to reparent yourself on that <clears throat> but, one? Because do you know what you were looking for? What? Emotional connection. Someone who very much valued your existence. A valuable relationship. They they do. They do very much. Mostly Beanie Baby. I think she's probably the, the happiest to see me. Although Squirrely Girl is uh she does have her moments. She as has well. her moments. Pumpkin Pie likes videos and video games. Yeah. But she has her moments as well. Yes. So yes. she she doesn't like completely hate me, and I don't think that you know she hates. Uh, no, she doesn't hate you. No, at not all. at all. Like no, I, you're not the evil stepdad. She just. No, I'm I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to think of how I I want to <laughs> yeah. say that. Like, she she doesn't 
She because she acts the she's, same she's, way towards you. A, yeah, she's a nine year old. Like when she wants yeah. to talk to you, she's gonna talk your ear off for an hour. She has, and when she's yeah. doing her thing, she's doing her she's thing. She's very hyper focused and interested on things. And yeah. coming to give me a hug is not really as high on the list yeah, as it exactly. used to be. Exactly. And one day, you know, it'll drop off the other girls too. But I'm enjoying them no, while I get them. We're not thinking about that right now. No. Don't rush but them. but Beanie Baby, she is always there. Every time she's the one that she pushes the door closed, she makes sure yeah. it's locked, and then she lifts the blinds up, and then we give each other a thumbs up, saying like, "All right, it's good. We're all set. The door's locked. We're good. All right, love you, bye." Like, yeah, that's every single so, day. So I didn't, I didn't feel that when I would come when when my parents would come home, I would always be like, "All right, it's four thirty. Fun time is over." You know, I'm not going to be able to watch what I want to on the TV anymore. That's that that is immediately taken away, and it has to get switched over to the news. I wasn't, you know, it, it's just all of that went away. Like, I was like, I'm going to get yelled at for something. Like, I'm always going to get in trouble for yeah. something. That's how I always felt that as a little kid. I wasn't getting, like, beaten like you were, but it was always just very lucky, harsh. And I, I always felt like... It was cold. I think the word cold would be best. Kind of cold. Because like, like we have a very warm I felt home. like it's a burden. full of love, right? Like, yeah. our kids, like, they, they say, I want to show you this. Okay, show me. Mm-hmm. Do I care? 90% not, of the time? Not usually. Not as much. But I care. It's not that I don't care uh, that they want to show me. It's that, do I particularly you don't care, care about, the about topic. This, this topic? No, yeah. but do I care that you want to show me? Heck yes. Yeah. I am so enthralled in your excitement. Yes. And so we have a very warm home, and it sounds like you had a very cold home. And so, like, in a way of reparenting. I mean, they kept a, a log on the fire all the time. Like, it was very, like, sweatingly hot. <laughs> but the, the You've way been that there. you could. She keeps I know, it really she hot. Keeps it sweltering. But the way that you repair it yourself for that particular type of thing would be to give yourself that comfort, right? Because give yourself that space to feel good and warm at home. You know, and and that's really what that comes down to is, like, instead of feeling like home is this place where you don't get what you want or that things are bad or whatever, it's it's that idea of, like, home is warm. I deserve this. You know, it's not getting that comfort of someone who cares that you're there from your parents. It's from me. And I, I literally, I'm also like the kids the second you get home. I'm like, Jim! That's true. <laughs> you're also a big mama puppy. I am. I love it. I love it. We get very excited when daddy comes home. Every, if anybody has watched Tori's TikTok lives, you know this to be a fact. Yeah. <laughs> Every time. Right. But that's that's really the thing with reparenting. So another thing that I've learned to do is kind of to set boundaries. Because when I was a kid, I didn't have the opportunity to set boundaries, right? I was just do what, you, do what I say when I say it because I said to or else, right? And so that kind of put me in this vulnerable position as an adult. Because how do you say no when you've never been able to say no before? No. Oh. Well, I just did. Never mind. Never mind. No. <laughs> but that's, you know, and, and that's the thing when you're reparenting yourself as a parent, which should probably be a different episode because I have a lot to say on that in particular because I've been reparenting myself as a parent. I mean, so. we can we can expound on it. Yeah. You, can, you can just talk about all the steps that you've made to, to do the thing. Right. But that's honestly like that's that's what it is, is that like giving my kids the opportunity to tell me like, no. And, and then I just say, Why? You know, because my kids, I feel like people there. There is this misconception that if you let your kids say no, that they're going to take advantage of that and just like yeah, be that conservative children. YouTuber made a whole video. He about made you. a whole video about me. Yeah, <laughs> uh, he hated it. He's like, oh, these kids are going to walk all over you. Like they don't though. They don't take advantage of that fact. They're very fair and level headed about it because they know I only ask them to do things that are, like are important to do. Yes, and they they do have a lot of freedom, but. I think the most important part of reparenting myself was validating my own feelings. Because growing up, it was like, I mean, my, my brother was struggling with mental illness and he had a crisis. And years later, I had a crisis and both of us ended up on a psych ward. And when it happened for me, my mom was like, oh, so you're going to be just like your brother. There was no validation of feelings. It was a shame. Did you get the grippy socks? I did get the grippy socks yes. a couple times. I got those really great. every time I've had surgeries Yeah, because they don't want you to fall over right. if you're in the hospital. Honestly, but... like the grippy socks vacations I had didn't actually involve grippy socks, but it's okay. You didn't. Uh, get, so you didn't get grippy socks? I didn't get grippy socks. You, you just lied then. You just said you did. No, but it's the now same. We, no, we, a grippy right. socks Phantom vacation. Phantom family friends, that's... we can't trust Tori anymore, clearly. Wow. You can trust me. It's just I, everyone knows what a grippy socks vacation is. And although I didn't have grippy socks, I did take that vacation a couple of times. But <laughs> thank you. <Timothy. laughs> but the thing is, is that like, yeah, uh, 
for this me, will be the last episode. We do a lot of sound effects. Yeah, by sorry, the way. very sorry. But it's, this, new. it's new. It's a new. Toy. It's very new. We're having fun with it. But so it, much like you had fun on your grippy socks vacation. I, I did honestly. Like I begged them to not send me back home. Uh, <laughs> it's a different story. It wasn't because it was fun. But anyway, uh, my mom was not concerned about my feelings. She thought I was faking it for attention, and she was just ashamed and annoyed that I was struggling and so learning to validate my own feelings and not just validate them but take care of them was one of the biggest steps in reparenting I could do like I look forward to going to therapy because I think growing up because my mom was not interested in caring about my feelings and my struggles that I did turn to like attention seeking behavior because I wanted someone to notice I was struggling so that they would help me. And the thing is, what I've learned as an adult is that no one is going to make you get help. You just have to find it. Yeah. And <clears throat> that was a big thing for me because as an adult, I mean, I'm going to put adult in quotations. Uh, in my in my early twenties, I was struggling so badly but I didn't know how to look for help and I was just hoping someone would notice I needed it and as I grew up into my late 20s and through this reparenting process I had to like reconcile with the fact that like hey it is okay to feel these feelings and it's also okay to get help for them and and that was a big step for me in self-parenting to validate my own feelings yeah and, and part of that as well has been, and, and this was a big one for me too, and I, I want, like, if you're a parent listening to this, this is something I highly recommend when it comes to, like, things like mom guilt. This is the thing I started doing a few years ago because I noticed that I felt bad all the time. Like, I'd, I would lay down in bed at night and think, like, I yelled at my kids too much. I didn't play with them as, as much as I should have. I did too much of this and not enough of this. Like, I'm a horrible mom. I would lay in bed and just beat myself up, stay up at night, and just feel bad. And one day I just was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I'm not becoming a better parent. I'm just hating myself for who I am. And then one day I was like, I'm just, what, what good did I do today? And I started focusing. So instead of laying in bed at night thinking, man, I messed up today, I started thinking, what did I do right today? Because as it turns out, like even when you make big mistakes during the day, you probably did a lot more good than bad. But as it turns out, like you can look at you can look at uh, what is the review site that people leave reviews on? Rotten Tomatoes. Yelp. 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 People are way more willing to complain than they are to, to give praise. Right. And the thing is, we do that to ourselves. We absolutely do that to ourselves. And I so, like, I like, I, I'm one of the people, though, that is more likely to go leave a positive review, which you can all do on iTunes. Leave us a five star review. Timothy, not the time. It's absolutely the time. Bestie. Anyway. So, Yelp, and people are more likely to yeah. give negative reviews. Back at it. Yeah. So, people are more likely to, to give bad reviews. And it, we do that to ourselves as well. Like, we're going to lay in bed at night and think about all the bad things we did in a day. Nothing is stopping you from thinking about all the good things you did in a day. And oh, you're giving yourself a self Yelp every night? A self Yelp. <laughs> that sounds terrible. <laughs> but the thing is, what I learned is that by instead of laying in bed hating myself every night if I started focusing on the things I did good and the things I wanted to do more of I started doing better the more I thought about the good things I did in a day the more good things I did the next day so you're saying thinking positively has a positive reaction it's on yourself like actually science um but I then know why do you always listen to such bad music wow uh, but anyway, because, I mean, it's hard to just stop your daily negative self-talk. But if I could just start you on one good habit, like, fine. Like, if you want to hate yourself all day, like, I get it. I do the same thing. But when you're laying in bed at night and you're having a hard time sleeping, just give yourself the grace of thinking about the good things you did during the day instead of the bad things you did. Name one good thing you did today. What? Oh. I know a good thing I did today. <laughs> Tell me. I made a good step. I made it a good adult step in my life. When I was at the doctor, I complained to him about the the Walgreens that I will throw under the bus near our house the, who doesn't fulfill. They suck. They are awful. Awful Walgreens. They are having staffing Yelp, issues. you're going to hear from us. There's, there are staffing issues, but I, I've had problems getting my prescriptions filled and getting anything done with the Walgreens nearby. 
It's just, it's a struggle. They're only open 9 to 6. My work shift is 9 to 6. They're closed for lunch on the time when Bestie, I go to lunch. I can go get you your meds. You're busy. You got all no, them kids to pack I, up and such. I pick those babies up by 3. I can just run over anyway, to prescription. Anyway, I, I, I'm complaining about them. They don't okay. fill them, though. I can't even get a hold of them on the phone. Every time oh, okay. I call, I can't get through That's to fine. them. If I go over there, sometimes, the last time I went and they said I had a prescription that was ready, and they didn't have it ready. And then they told me I couldn't even have it until like five more days. And, and they're just very bad at it. So I told the doctor I wanted to switch to the pharmacy that was literally in the same building as them this time. Mm-hmm. And I went and I got my prescription filled within 10 minutes oh, and got lovely. it done right there. So I, so I made a, a good choice. A good thing, I spoke a, up for myself. You have a hard time like talking to strangers and making appointments. Well, they're not strangers. My nurse there, the, the nurse who... Who does everything? She had COVID last month, um, and she's also an anti-vaxer. Oh god! And and she doesn't like wearing a mask. And she was saying she's like, yeah, I don't like wearing this mask because I cough into it and I breathe into it. She's like, yeah, and I, I still can't taste anything. She's like, my husband took me out for filet mignon, and it just tasted bad. Like I still haven't gotten my taste back. I'm like, honestly, you should have just bought the five dollar sirloin instead of a filet mignon. You're just throwing money down the toilet. I don't know what that has to do with the rest of your story, but that, I'm not that mad that I was just crazy. It. That was just crazy to yeah. me that She's I heard today. She's the one today. who gave you like a booster because we're like big on vaccination here. Yeah, like, she gave me a flu shot the a couple of years yeah, ago. Yeah, but and said I that, had you get like your tetanus shot to re up that because yeah. you should be getting your tetanus shot every few years. Look into it if you haven't gotten one. Like, that's a good thing to do. Get your Tdap. Uh, but I told Jim to go get his Tdap because again we like vaccinations, and he's like, I went to get my booster for this, and she was mm-hmm. like, I hate vaccines. She, <laughs> like, yeah, she was like, I don't like, I don't trust vaccines you don't know what they're putting in these things they're gonna try and their population control the government's just trying to kill healthy people which arm do you want it in like that was basically <laughs> oh how it my went goodness. i love her though she's great she's awesome she's she's wacky and it gives me good stories to oh, to think about later on okay <laughs> <laughs> so that but, was a good thing i did it was i did yeah. a good adult thing for myself today so what was but what was a good thing good you thing, did you know what it's actually it's not even a good thing today it's a good thing this week so the kids started back at school last week and i decided i want to change my schedule and the one thing i am failing at with changing my schedule is i still will not go to bed at a reasonable time however i do wake up at a reasonable time every day because i have to and i'm good at waking up not good at going to bed good at waking up i've been running on five hours of sleep a night for the last two weeks it's whatever it's fine. I'm doing good. Anyway, uh, every day. You sound day, like you've drank eight cups of coffee right before speaking that sentence. <laughs> I drink a lot of coffee now. Anyway, so uh, every day when I get home from dropping the kids off at school, I get home about 745 in the morning. I immediately get to doing the housework because prior when the kids were doing school at home, I would kind of lay on the couch until nine or 10 in the morning. And then I would feel overwhelmed in the afternoons. Like, why is not anything getting done? But now because I have to be up, I am utilizing my time better. And I'm really proud of myself for that. I'm proud of you for that too. Yeah. Yes. It's very nice coming home to a nice, nice clean house. Like you live here. It's today. wonderful. Yeah. But not during the daytime when all the messes no, are made. No. No, I'm up too. here in my like beat lab. No, you live here too. Yeah, in the beat lab. Yeah, tell that to your drawer full of candy wrappers next to the bed. It's anyway, in a drawer, not in the floor. So that brings me to my next point as another reparenting thing. Is eat all the candy you want. Self-care and cleaning. My parents didn't teach me how to take care of my body or the environment I lived in. And I will tell you that is probably one of the biggest things I still struggle with mm-hmm. to this day. Yeah, because every time you get in my car, you you bring oh, no, a water I don't bottle. Feel bad about that. At this you bring point. a water bottle just to throw down in my Sometimes, floorboard. Um, I don't know why you do that. Do the dishes, you walk by the, the trash bottle. can to get into the car. <laughs> anyway, you're a butt. Um, no, I mean I'm gonna say this, and it's gonna like I I don't want any hate for this because this was literally 20 years ago. Okay, okay. But I didn't realize that you had to wash your body in the shower until I was like 13, 14 years old. I just started taking showers one day because my parents didn't want to give me baths anymore. And no one ever told me to wash my body or gave me body wash. What that did was, you do? Do I? I would just wash my hair. I would just wash my hair. I grew up in a neglectful, abusive home. Did you stink? I don't think so, but I don't know. Honestly, because I would just, I would stand in the water and I would wash my hair. The soap would run on my body. No one told me to use soap on my body. And because this started, I started taking showers at such a young age. I didn't realize it until I was a young teenager that, oh, I need to wash my body. 
that was neglect. That wasn't my fault. I wasn't disgusting on purpose. It was just, it never occurred to me. That was something I had to learn. And like that comes to things because I grew up, my mom was like a hoarder. We grew up in Phil. Was. Still is, but I don't live with her anymore, thankfully. But um, I hate visiting her house because it's gross. But um, yeah, I mean, nobody cleaned when I was growing up. Like we didn't have to clean, which was like cool for me and my brother because we were like, oh, we don't have to do chores. Man, I wish someone made me do chores and taught me how to clean things because I find even now at almost 30 years old. Trauma dump. Thank you, Jim. At almost 30 years old. I still don't know how to do things because I grew up in this filth and every now and then every couple months I would wake up and because my dad worked nights so on his day off every now and then we'd wake up to a clean house that would last for a day or two because no one kept up with it and no one was cleaning and it was it was just filth and disgustingness and it's like today like I was I was on a TikTok live today and I was like yeah like I got foundation on my pants and I guess it's just there forever because I don't know how to get it out and people were recommending cleaning products and I'm like I've never heard of that I don't know how to use that. Because I don't. I literally, like, people say, oh, I clean that with bleach. I know how to use a bleach spray bottle. The actual, like, jug of bleach people buy to use to clean, no clue how to use that. I don't know, and it scares me. So I, I've never used bleach, and I definitely don't use it for laundry. No, I'm not even just talking about laundry. I'm saying, I'm saying like, like, I'm saying I don't, I don't know what else you would do with it. I did do an, a, an experiment once Yeah. that you took bleach, and I want to say maybe vinegar, maybe hydrogen peroxide. You mix the two of them together and then put a piece of steel wool into it, and it immediately rusted it. I should look that experiment up again. Yeah. Not important. Not important, but yeah, I mean, like, because that's, that was the thing. No one taught me how to take care of my body or myself or my surroundings. Or your and- mind. At, honestly, yeah. And as an adult, like, I felt like a scramble to figure it out. But I was like, that's the big thing with reparenting as, as well, is that I've been patient with myself. No one was ever patient with me growing up. And now I'm being patient with myself. Like, hey, like, maybe I don't know a lot of things that a lot of people do. But that's okay, because I'm learning as I go. And I don't have the shame of saying I don't know anymore. I think there's a power, there's like an empowerment in being able to confidently say, I just don't know, because there's nothing wrong with not knowing things. But if you pretend to know, you're not going to learn. So, yeah, that's kind of like, that's that's where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. This was a very Toy <sighs> Fandom heavy episode. This was a very Toy Fandom heavy. Because as we discussed in the beginning of the episode, Jim is like, I've never thought about my feelings once in my life and I don't plan to now. I mean, we're going to revisit this. We're going to do a part two on this episode like six months from now because tonight you thought about it. You're like, how do I do this? So I'm going to work with Jim on reparenting himself. So I'm going to reparent. <laughs> you're going to reparent. You're so. Okay, mommy. I'm sorry. No. Mommy. No. Sorry. No. Mommy. Sorry. <laughs> mommy. Sorry. Mother. I found comfy. <laughs> Those are crickets. This is the, the, the scary noise. It's not necessary. I'm so sorry, friends. I'm not, but I am, but I'm not. Where can people find you if they would like to direct hate to you? For <laughs> You the can't buttons? find me if you want to hate me, but if you want to be nice to me, I'm Tori Phantom in all places, but you have to put a dot in the middle if you find me on Instagram. Uh, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, sometimes I tweet. Uh, TikTok, which is my, that's my, that's my bae. Uh, do people still say bae? Probably not. Anyway. Probably not. If you're saying it, then I'm sure they yeah. don't. But just, you can find me. I'm Tori Phantom. I'm Jim Beard on TikTok. I am Jimothy Strange on Instagram. Jimothy Strange on TikTok and Instagram. That's it. <laughs> but anyway, we love you. And uh, we hope that you're reparenting yourself. Well, I have to sneeze. Go for it. <laughs> no, I don't have to anymore. Anyway. Do it. Go ahead and sneeze. Yeah, just, it's time to go to bed, go honestly. Sneeze. Godzilla, buddy. Good night. All right. Good night, friends. Do you want me to redo a story? No, we're not going to do that. Oh, you need a snack. We'll get you a tissue. Oh, you already have a bottle of water. Listen, listen. I love you. Good night. Good night. I love you. Good night.